So protein in diet is pretty key. And the biggest problem with protein in the diet when they say, are you getting enough protein? Well, we know really f for years now that vegans really get probably twice the amount of protein they need. So the problem is too much protein even for vegans. Okay. And there, there is this, this research that just came out. It basically says people who, who do um, excess of protein in their kind of middle age, less than 65, okay, have double amount of, of mortality and four times more cancer. So we got to hit the right thing. What is that right thing? It's called the mTOR pathway. Somewhere between 35 and 70 grams, which is not very much protein, is the optimal protein that suppresses the mTOR pathway uh, when you activate it with too little protein or too much protein, which most people are doing too much protein, you are doing just that. You're going to have four times more cancer. And that's what the research shows. Pretty interesting kind of question. So really, we don't need much protein. 35 to 70 grams, mTOR pathway is a real genetic pathway, and it, uh, when it's suppressed by the proper amount of protein, you actually uh, live longer, have less cancer. It's actually important. Uh, so we it's a longevity and anti-cancer thing. So that's really, really super important. We know that people, uh, the research is showing that the Oxford research, 45,000 people, showed that people eating meat and so forth uh, have 32% more heart disease. Okay, that's 40,000, 45,000. That's pretty impressive. And then we have uh, uh, research done in, uh, with 121,000 people at Harvard. Again, people having a, a slice of meat, three ounces, size of a deck of cards. We don't want to gamble with our life, okay? Size of a deck of cards, I think that's symbolic. Have 20% more mortality if it's particularly junk meat. And uh, about... 20% more heart disease and about 10 to 13% more cancer. So the data is there. For diabetes, meteors have, in the best studies, okay, have 35 to 50% more diabetes. So the message is in. It's not that, not that complicated. Now what's interesting is for the longevity issue, plant-based proteins don't cause as much of a problem. Still, it's better to stay in there. Now after 65, the, I actually... This is a really revelation. I've been struggling with doing pull-ups, you know, and I was uh, at 26 pull-ups. And it's like, I'm not breaking through here. And then I read about, the fact is, when you're over 65, and I'm, my age is 72, and it's like, you need more protein, because we don't absorb the protein as well. As soon as I added one tablespoon of E3 Live, I went to 32, where I kind of, 32 pull-ups. So it's like, oh, it's that easy. So... What I'm saying is we need the right amount of protein. With age, we need a little bit more protein. So after 65, it's a, we, we can go a little bit more because we don't absorb as well. Okay? So it's interesting. So I just... Life changes. There's no absolute. See? You get, there's a right amount of protein when you're 45, and it's different than when you're 65. We've got to understand the change factors. And they did a Swedish study, and, and basically, people had three glasses of milk had a 200% increase in death rates, okay? Um, it, it goes on and on how, how the subtleties, but, but basically, we decrease our risk. Now, this is interesting. There's studies out of Stanford, so 70% of the population needs a higher protein, and about 30% needs a lower protein. What are we talking about? 70 grams versus 35 grams. For most meteors, that's just low, period. Both are low. But there is, we've got to be kind of clear about that. This is the mTOR pathway. So we can get adequate protein. Nuts and seeds are really good. I'll just note that people who, have, who eat nuts in general will have 7% less mortality. If they have uh, four times a week of nuts, it's, it's up to uh, um, 8%, uh, 11%. And if you're having nuts every day, it's up to literally 13 to 20% less mortality. So nuts and seeds are very, very important life force energy. I'm just making the point. It's really high quality. 
Eat, not sleep longer, okay? We have all these things available to us, all these protein concentrates. And then we can get protein from, from the sprouts, but then you have to eat a bushel of sprouts to do that. Okay, so these are easier ways to do it. Fat, that's a big issue, very misunderstood. And uh, I'm going to kind of sum it up, uh, is that I, I compared our 25 to 45% fat diet to Esselstyn's 10% and um, Dr. Ornish's 10% uh, fat diet. And we did pretty well. Uh, cholesterol is not an issue, and I'll get to that. But nevertheless, in my study, the, the cholesterol went down to 159, which is the lowest I like to see. Now, Esselstein uses statins, and he got the 137. That's dangerous, okay? Uh, your rate of suicide at the lowest level of cholesterol is six times higher. Did you hear what I said? Six times more depression and suicide if your cholesterol is too low, because you need cholesterol for your nervous system. If you're just at the, the lower 25%, you double the rate of suicide. And I'm like, come on. We don't want that to happen. So... We're worrying about heart disease, but a holistic view says, wait, there's more going on than that. Excuse me, you wrote no group? <laughs> yeah, for diabetics. This is a diabetic group. But I'll answer that later uh, in the diabetic study. Later you have fruit, but not, not initially. And then Ornish, again, that. And what we see is we drop our triglycerides amazing amount to 82. That's what does cause heart disease. And the others increase, and the reason is carbohydrates increase triglycerides, so it's not working in the right direction for us. Then, uh, so, so I just, you can see that a 25 to 45% fat diet actually will lower your, can lower your cholesterol if it's a live food diet. Okay, milk, 54% fat, okay? Now, the cholesterol facts, and I'm going to summarize it up, is... Women with a cholesterol of 270 or more live 28% longer. The higher cholesterol, the longer you live. Now, that's really interesting. This has also been shown in the Framingham study. And we'll go in. Yeah, let's blow your mind. Let's, you'll get it. I just want you to hear it. People who are less than 160 have all kinds of trouble. But basically, there has been no connection between People hate more saturated fat or less saturated fat. A cholesterol of 160 to 260. Now, I'm talking about 30 years of study, about 1.5 million people involved in the different studies. So you should say what? Because in 1953, it all got low fat is the way. And I want another distortion of science because that, that research was bogus. It, but I can't, don't have time to get into that. So... Here's this study, it basically, with 21 studies, they mix them together, 340,000. Basically, the risk of heart disease between the people that have the lowest and the highest fat was zero difference. Okay? And this is about people who are older, uh, really in the 89 and, and, and the 724. Now, here's the point. For every 39 point increase in cholesterol, there's a 15% decrease in mortality. This is all research, man, that's all. But it's good to ask because you should be shocked because all you've been hearing is low cholesterol is good. And I'm saying maybe not. High cholesterol is associated with better memory. A lot of research. National Institute of Health. People with the highest cholesterol score higher in cognitive results. This is the key study. This came out, Archives of Internal Medicine, the AMA Journal, showed that all the studies for the last 30 years, there was no evidence to support the widespread mythical belief that limiting saturated fat is beneficial or protective for heart health or longevity. Isn't that interesting? That's the AMA. Who pays for their advertisement? Meat. Meat. No, but, but also the whole statin thing. This is this thing, you don't need statins. Well, the truth is you don't need statins. And from a diabetic point of view, statins increase the rate of diabetes 48 to 80%, depending. That's really bad news. Okay, cholesterol facts. Okay, but less low cholesterol is a problem. And we're, we're, now, I want to say increases stroke. That's really important. 
increases Parkinson, memory loss, I mentioned depression, okay, and I mentioned suicide. So my big concern, particularly as a psychiatrist, among other things, is, hey, you've got a low cholesterol, we're going to have to improve. Uh, if you're less than 159, I'm going to give you some coconut oil because that's a danger zone for depression and suicide. Now here are the references. Just look at the idea of the a lot of references supporting this. And this is a hundred you know, 1.5 million uh, clients. A lot of references, huh? Were they all eating meat-based diets, perhaps? I don't want to go into the whole discussion. I'm just talking about cholesterol. I'm just making the point. Now, omega-3 is important. Now, why is this important for vegans? One of the things I noticed, and I'm running another minute or two to conclude, is in the 80s, I saw a lot of people very imbalanced, vegan, live food people, because they weren't getting enough fat in their diet. They needed omega-3s for brain function, for nervous system function, for heart function, okay, and for anti-cancer. That's pretty important. So we kind of look at that whole picture here, and we need our omega-3s, we need our cholesterols, and it's safe. I want to hear, I want you to hear it. Your cognitive function will improve with age if you're getting enough. So that's the thing. And here are the references about the omega-3. It's the same thing. A big, long list of research saying what we need to hear. We need omega-3s. We need a cholesterol. Now, keeping that in mind, I'm just mentioning one more thing and then I'm going to round it up. The issue of grain. The Dallas Masters used a principle called bigu. In the 11th century, the Taoist women, enlightened women, okay, literally, these are enlightened women who danced on the jewel pond, really said, grains block your transcendence. They also said, eat live food. So basically, they ate a live food and non-grain diet. And they've been doing that from 475 BC. So I throw that out because of my work with diabetes, grains really you can uh, ameliorate things with grains, but you can't really heal diabetes so easily. But we have trouble with grains affecting the brain, and the, gra the, the brain as well. So now you're going to go to the c c conclusion here, which is very simple. We'll talk about some of this tomorrow. But here's the fructose issues. Fructose is a problem too. For some reason, we took a little longer. But here, here we're going. Here's where I want you to see. This is the research I've done. This is not theory. This is the research I've done. Is that an adequate live food diet, 25 to 45% fat, 25 to 45% complex green carbohydrates. I'm talking about vegetables, fruit, leafy greens, sprouts. That's what I'm talking about, okay? and 10 to 20 percent protein depending on your constitution. So that's the overall macronutrient ratio that I'm really focusing on. The bottom line, just to sum it up, in each generation we're given the medicine for healing that generation. Live food veganism is the medicine for healing this generation for the future and for the preservation of the planet. Okay. So the holistic live food veganism is, is really the wave of the present and of the future. So that's the bigger picture. Not only for yourself, but for our children, our grandchildren, and so forth, but for the very healing of the planet. We've been given the medicine. So may everybody be blessed that we're successful in applying it to ourselves and to the planet. Amen.